The next topic we're gonna to cover is MATLAB. I want to look at the flying brick problem first to see what more we wanna do on that. Oh, good meow. So when we were together last time, I've tried to, I have here the uh, code that we ended with on the flying brick. Let's review that from the top and then decide what we, what we still wanna look at on this. <laughs> I haven't really done anything since Tuesday. I had these great plans. I do leave class with great plans, Kevin. Like I'm gonna build a rocket ship and bring it to architecture, but you pull them off and I don't. I have these great plans. And pull them off. Oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay, so here was flying brick. Let's just look again one more time from the top of the method um, review. You guys are pretty good at that clear, clears the workspace. First is clear all. Clear all, just so you know, it's a change, recent change in MATLAB. Clear all clears the uh, pre compiling, although MATLAB technically doesn't pre compile, it does some. So if you clear all, it's gonna pre-compile everything. So if you're just trying to clear the workspace, all you need is clear. This close all, close the graphic workspace. This is the decreased radians I use. Uh, we defined some constants at the top. I don't have any of the patch, any of the visualization in this code. It probably wouldn't hurt to, oh, I did. I indicated for this problem, the state vector, it was X, Y, Z, and our angles, which we decided were uh, P, K, Psi, and then the derivatives of each of those. This is the standard. Can you see that okay? Is that text large enough or need to be? Okay. The, the, the standard state space representation is that I have my generalized coordinates and then the derivative of all. So that's giving two dots. I gave you 12 uh, terms in my state vector. So I need the initial condition that the, you know, in dynamics, we typically call these initial condition problems. In mechanics, your last class, you typically call them boundary condition problems, right? They're both solved with differential equations. In our case, the differential equations are in time. When you're solving boundary value problems, typically the, their derivatives in space. If you're doing dynamics of flexible bodies, then you've got both, right? So that you can imagine the complication there. But in this case, it's an initial value problem, so I need I define my initial conditions. You define a time. Jason was asking that, but you're talking more explicitly about how the different ways I can deal with time. In this case, I'm giving a full vector from zero to ten with points every you know place every point one second. So it will return a solution at those points. If I don't specify the intermediate points, it just gives me back whatever it, however it decides to distribute those. So I'm calling here the OD four five. Uh, I'm using the OD four five. I've got this. There's two formats that I know that you can pass variables, and I've been using this one. Again, I, I always feel a little clunky on that, but uh, this is working. Uh, so I guess I'm, I know, the new line function, I'm quite sure about that. But it's saying these are the parameters we need to pass. Here's the function. I can pass all these parameters, and I got anything to see at 10. Let's see what else I have for my moment here. I'm not so sure. And I'm passing in these extra coordinates, so I can put as many as I want. Then T span at XO. I can then have options after that. We didn't use options in this code, and that solves the problem. That solves the solution. I think everyone's on top of that. Once I call this function, it's stuck in that function until it does the integration all the way to the end of that time. Then it returns. It's kind of a pain in some times because I think well, I want to vary things along the way. I'd like to change things inside this. And Jason and I talked about that. Jason, so let's review that. Jason asked the question. Well, I would like to have a control. I would like to have forces by thrusters here, or thrusters on the outside, or my primary thruster, right? I'd like to be able to change those as I'm landing. I'd like to change it as I land. How would I go about doing it? Well, you know, traditionally, if I'm calling a function, I would, you know, in my main program, I'd need to do my control loop, and then every time I call that, I pass it in. But I can't do that. I have no control. I have no control of this. All that, and then it's a black box until the time integration is done. I suppose I could call this guy recursively and do little time integration steps. 
I could be wrong. I've done that some. I don't think Matt, that that's not the uh, it doesn't feel that efficient, quite as efficient. I've done that some. A second option is I can just write my own integration routine. And of course, my own integration routine, I have full control. So I call, you know, I want to do time one step forward in time, check my parameters, or however many steps in time, check my I have this other thing that can do. So, but with this guy, I, can, I either have to integrate small times or make changes to that. So the other option is, uh, and there's two class of options, I can actually embed code inside here. So if my control is a function of my state variables, then it's natural, just put that right inside my equation of motion. So inside my equation of motion, I can embed a controller, as long as, you know, look, look, look at what I have inside here. I'm passing these parameters, but these have to be static. You know what call it? But these parameters, time and, and uh, my state, are updated all the time. So if I can write a control that's just a function of time and state, then I can just put my control right here. So for example, yeah, you control, I could say, for example, what, you know, the, the force, that thrust force, is a gain times an error in my state, some term in my state, plus a derivative term times an error in my derivative state, so the PV controller would be very easy. The integral controller is something that I have to carry forward in time. That's, that's a little problematic. That's a little harder. I think there is a way to do it. And uh, this example here, I had an example. If we have time, this rolling ball, I had an idea. I was going to show you another, a third way. You could do it. You add sort of dumb variables to your state and carry it along. You could have like an integration term or something. So that's the, uh, I think that's enough general discussion. So here's the function, here are the state term, you know, here are the derivatives of this term. All right, so what do we want to do on this? Um, what do we still want to talk about? We ran it, some things worked. The wrong function. Some things worked. Uh, I, let's let's see if we can expand this a little bit. So it feels like the uh, it it seems like in looking at that figure that my displacements are working. We talked a little bit about the angles. Uh, oh. I'm going to pause. There. There's my angles. So it looks like my psi, is, the spacecraft is rotating to one and a half radians. So I guess to 90 degrees. And then coming static. And the other angles are not rotating. So that doesn't seem completely unreasonable. Maybe. Why don't we look at uh, the velocities for a moment? That'd be convenient. Um, I'm now going to plot the velocities. Oh, hold on, hold up. Oh. Yeah. So velocities are going to be, the x velocity is going to be 7, 8, and 9. And the angular velocities, <clears throat> phi dot, what, phi, to, phi theta psi, are, those values are going to be 10. Other than 12. So there I've got uh, velocities of the two 
I'm on the third graph now. It's not labeled. I'm on the third graph. These are the velocities of the, uh, I guess this is the x velocity, the y velocity, and the z velocity. So I, my force is causing it, I guess gravity is causing it to move in z, and my force is causing it to move in the uh, y. And then this would be my. other velocity term. And this is my, so it's a little hard to see on my colors here, but I've got uh, my red, green, blue. So I guess the red was the, was it, the, was it phi was the first angle? I'm trying to see if green shows up there. Okay, uh, please jump in with discussion on that at any point. Discussion. So let's now think about uh, how I'm gonna incorporate in my, into my um, patch, into my uh, patch command, my, my code that does the, uh, rotations. So to do that, well, I want to use our time well. I guess I haven't, haven't got an exact example. All right, so let me pull. Do I put the, uh, looking for the, uh, where did I put, the, oh, here it is, it's right here, the animation. So this animation code. Um, well, yeah, this is, the, if you want, <laughs> exact, well, yeah. I mean, do you guys want, so here's what I thought on this. I was gonna spend you know, about 30 minutes on this and I'll work on whatever parts you want. As long as you want. In terms of the integration, we've got the equations and they seem to be working. We need to do some check. We did some checking pretty well on XYZ. We didn't do quite as much checking on the rotation. We need to spend a little time doing some checking on the rotation. Okay. Um, we can go into that together if you'd like. I'm somewhat proposing that in the same way we check the, the displacements, you follow a similar process of checking the rotation. You know, give it a case where you don't expect the rotation. Um, Give it a case where maybe you expect the rotation on one axis. That's that's what I have here. If I look at this, it seems somewhat consistent. When I look at the uh, velocity, I got rid of that. I got rid of that. But you know, I saw that I had that one steady angular velocity around the one term. No, I didn't have a steady velocity. I had a linearly increasing velocity, which meant that I, I would have a steady acceleration, a constant acceleration, which seemed consistent with the one term that I got. It did seem odd that that, that in displacement, that term came up to 90 degrees and stopped. So I need to think about that. That, that didn't seem consistent. The velocity seemed consistent. Uh, I need to think about that. I would probably start with, you know, what I know works first and then try to solve what doesn't work. So it looked like a lot of works. I'd double check that and go back to and look, we can do more on that if you want. My, but what I thought we would do next is think about how we're going to integrate this into our plotting, our patch plotting commands. And if you want, we could even look at pulling in a, we did that once, we've done it once, but if you want, we can review pulling in another STL pack. Do that. All right. So in this case, uh, I should have had these over. So. Bear with me for a minute while I do that. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I need to, uh, I'm going to need to download. Ah, I need to download this.
about that. I need the STL read. And then uh, I, I'd like to just grab some code. I think it was the STL tutorial gave us some code. Okay. That's a great one. Is that good? <laughs> Just notice how I avoided that carefully. I was not putting my mouse anywhere over that. He may have planted something here that's going to take me. Okay. All right. Now. Rain somewhere. And the way I did it, I would have hashing over every three or every same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to grab. We're gonna. We're gonna. Um, I'm gonna grab the. Uh, I'm using the uh, sat the uh, satellite NASA satellite. I haven't even tried it yet, so we'll see if it's any good. Um, we'll try that. It kind of works. All right, and we'll put it into this code. So the. Uh, so let me go ahead and open the tutorial. Okay, I need STL read in the fun. I need it in that function. It's it's you know it's just another M file. It's got to be in the space, or you can add to the path. You guys kind of probably know that a little bit. I could add to the path if you get more involved. At the moment, at this level, I'm just throwing everything into the same folder. Uh, I will open tutorial. So that's just that's a. Uh, that's kind of a given. It always looks, unless you tell it to, it always looks for any files that you call out in the same folder. But yes. Yeah, by the current working folder. In the, if, you, if you had browsed your folder yeah. and try to run it, it'll blow up. Because it, it's that's where, you, where it says current folder, yeah. if you browse that somewhere else, that's not the current yeah. It is pretty good. The new editor is pretty good to give you the chance to change the folder. I mean, they have changed that. But yeah, anything that's in the path. Um, yeah, you can you can define a folder as a input. So you can create a subfolder to have functions and back up to so I'm going to what I'm doing is I went to the I went to the STL read tutorial and I copied this. Uh, so we're going to load. Yeah, it looked like in the example, I think I had multiple <coughs> bodies. In this case, I think I just have one. So I'll call it uh, uh, MLM. I'll call it my MLM is now I need to. I need to give it the name. And it looks like, the, oh, I notice he can't spell. Well, that's my son. He's the only, he spells like his old dad. No, it is a space. It is a space. We may need to, you know, probably just a, yeah, just a. <laughs> it's working at home right now. It's, okay, it's working at home. You know, MATLAB is somewhere between old school and, you know, news, you know names and things. So just kind of be careful. The underscore is going to. Fix it. <laughs> take, take or leave that. Uh, let's see. I don't know what he's done with the colors and the edges. So let's just turn off the colors at the moment. I will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I gave him. I, I again. I like Kevin. I contracted that work out. <laughs> I contract out when I can. The problem is I don't stay on top of my contractors, and sometimes their quality is marginal. So. Um, Exactly. Okay. So, oh, oh, I see. I see. That's another. Okay. Don't need that. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of that. So, in this case, he he created this thing as just one body, and that's that's all we're really simple. So, we'll create a figure. We're gonna clear the axes. We'll do a patch. So, we're just gonna see what we get. So, I guess in this case, patch MLM. Uh, 
we might do one other step. Hold on. Oh, we don't need that. We only have one body. So we don't, since we only have one body, we're only going to, we're not going to do any of that stuff. Uh, the axis equal will make everything, um, give us the proper aspect ratio and throw me to view three. And then give me X, Y, and Z if I want to see that. I'm not sure what the break is there for. Get rid of that. So let's put a pause. I'm going to put a pause before the figure opens and runs and i'll put a pause after so we don't then launch into the other thing so we can talk about it. so all right so i've i've done what i envision you guys will do you'll have to somehow get some up draw an ob object grab this one uh create one in matlab and run that or, or put that in and then i'm going to run the program so it, i think it's running right now i should probably say um the uh, MATLAB mobile doesn't show you a busy. Oh, really? Maybe waiting right here. It says line 11. Yeah, you know what? I it, it In this case, it doesn't seem to be yelling at me, but it doesn't. In the normal, it kind of says paused, waiting. It gives me an indication of this. Way to do something. All right, so let's look at our workspace. Our workspace is MLM. Look, we've got this MLM. Uh, so let's look at it. It's a structure. And look at his, oh, he got a little carried away. He's got uh, 4,000 faces and then these vertices. So how do I see the faces? Uh, I say uh, it's a structure. So I'll say M, uh, MLM.faces. And there they are. There's all 4,000 faces. And notice, you know, again, CAD, these STLs, they all do that. They're triangles. Could be polygons, but everything's triangles, little facets. And uh, you can control that. I guess, I don't know how, but I can find someone to help show him how to turn up or down his resolution on that. And then similarly with uh, the, uh, what were the other one, vertices. So there's all the vertices. So that's how the structure is called out. And uh, the colors, I could go back and do the colors just like before if I wanted. We'll see what colors we have. So let's run it again. Um, so going from the top. Oh, I see. I see now. That busy, do you see that busy symbol? So it is at this pause now. So I'm going to hit enter. Oops, I need to be down here. And uh, there. Okay, it's black. It has to do with the edge color because there's so many edges. That it's well, let's just turn all the e off the edge color. You can set a trans uh, transparency to the edge color, and that helps a lot. So you can still yeah, kind of yeah. see the edges, but if there's just so many in there, you just take it off. Yeah, that's a good point. I think in the interest of time, that that's you can do a lot with this. Um, and honestly, I throw this out, and my students always do way better than I. Um, I will just turn it off. How do I turn that off the edge color? Do you know? Any I guess I could just make it all zeros. That would be no color, right? Oops. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to say uh, MLM. I'm going to say MLM. edge color equals, and I don't quite know how to go off, turn it off, so I'll just say zero, zero, zero. I'm, here I'm giving it an RGB color set. Okay. That's gonna be black. Oh, black. Yeah, but I'm afraid there's so many edges. How do I turn it off? Yeah, that's what I was saying. So there's so many edges of so transparency. Like the edge transparency you can set as a like percentage. I think I could say none. Did you? What's it doing? What is it? Okay. Yeah. 
Now it could be that the color is black. Let's try this. Oh. Yeah, I'm at the end of the program. All right, try this again. I somehow lost my, how did I lose that? Um... That little guy there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's one on the bottom. Uh, okay. All right, so I need to hit another enter. Ah. So it looks like I can play with colors there. All right. Now, the first, okay. ah, this is good we did this. So right off the bat, our contractor messed us up a little bit. We need to rotate the whole thing. And we need to do a translation. Well, okay. we need to do a rotation. So let's do that first. Um, he should have known to ask. He should have known. He was. I was the customer. He was waiting. on you to come back with a change order. Oh, where's my? Okay, now I've got a problem. I'll have to reconstruct my line. I guess I'm going to have to reconstruct the. Uh, See, this code uses this little transformation. We're not doing that. So can someone just help me real quick with code to uh, do the rotations so we do it quickly? So I'm going to rotate my axes. Um, yeah, so I need to go for some counter, right? I equal 1 to the length of MLM dot vertice. So i got to change all the vertices. The faces never have to change, so I'll do that for and then. Uh, copy my 318. It's in there. Well, yeah, I don't want to pull another thing up. Does someone just have something to hand? I know Jason, I just handed you, you something. Um, okay, so I'm going to go MLM dot vertices, row one, all columns. And you're going to need your DTR if you don't have it, and your. Okay, I should have DTR. Is that what this looks like for pro I or number one? Oh, it is. Good. Yep. I, all columns equal um, the rotation. So I'll just leave it as R times MLM dot vertices. Come on, all columns. So I think that's got to be, what's the deal? That's got to be transposed and I have to transpose the whole thing again. I don't want to show that result. Does that look um, reasonable? Yeah, that looks right. Okay, and now I need to find my R, and I'm going to do a rotation around the, it looks like around the X. I'm going to stand it up, rotation around the X by 90, so that's going to be a 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, cos. 90 negative negative sign 90 and then uh, zero sign 90 okay cos 90 all right now that's going to rotate around the zero zero zero. It looks like the zero 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 is here. We'll see how it looks. Um, let's do that operation and see how it looks. So I'm going to get rid of this pause, and I'm just going to uh, put a. I think I could put a, a stop, maybe just a, a break, maybe. Will that stop the whole thing? No. Yeah. I could do sections. Yeah, I think I was just finishing this thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. 
You know, there are some things that miss. Yeah. Doesn't like the line 13. Oh, I just have some R right here. Okay. So. Yeah, that's when we get out of the loop. So you gotta go to a three. Go to a stop. Hmm. I guess I'll just use a pause. So he's standing up now. Here's what I need. Okay, now here's here's what I need to do next. <laughs> yeah, it did break it. <laughs> it worked. Uh, here's what I need to do next. Now, if I'm going to do successive rotations, you know, I need to think about the frame about which I want to rotate. I probably want to rotate around the do the rotations around the uh, um, the well depends on where, but probably around the centroid, the CG. Right now, it looks like the CG is right here at the bottom, maybe not up. So if I did a, if I, well, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a harder time in this. But here, you know, I can kind of wiggle it around and find where it is. So it looks to me like if I were doing this, I probably, okay. Okay, what you see what I would be doing here, I'd be scooting this thing around and trying to find to see to see where those zero zero zeros fall. I'm thinking so this is the display of the results that we're getting on our OBE stuff, right? But if you the the physics that we've done behind the scenes in OBE solving to find the motions of this thing. All we're doing is displaying it, right? So we could like this it could move correctly, but it might not look right because of how the editor is Well yeah, so we're trying to do two things. We're trying to get the right Dynamics, and then we're trying to get the right trying to make play it look right. of the yeah. dynamics. Yeah. Oh. All right. No, you're fine. So what? Yeah. You know, so we need to move that. And probably we're well, not probably we are. Our rotations around the body of the frame. That's what we have this tree, and then that that's how it's defined. So I need to move the zero 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 to the central. So for this part, let's assume I'm just going to the center. So let's assume that this zero zero falls right in the middle. It kind of looks like it does, and this zero is at the bottom here, and it looks like the whole thing's about 20 units up. So I'm going to scoot the thing down in 20 units, okay, in the z direction. Uh, 10 units. I'm going to scoot it down 10 units in the z direction. Here we go. So, uh, and it looks, and I can, in this case, I can, I can piggyback on this. So I'm going to do the rotation and then the translation. That's the order that I typically want to do them. So in this case, it wouldn't matter, but I want to do that. So I'm going to rotate and then I'm going to translate. So I'm going to subtract and this is a, a row vector. So I'm going to subtract zero or let me say, I'm going to add the vector zero, same line, same row, zero, zero, 10, minus 10. Okay. So now that should rotate and translate. So let's run that. That's cool. Did it work? Didn't seem to work. I've done something. It's mad right now. Oh, I think it was trying to do a. Okay, let's try one more time. There we go. I think my connection. That actually looks good. I'm gonna call it. Okay. 
So you do a little bit of that work to kind of move to where I want the thing. Now, next step that's kind of important to help you out. So these are my original coordinates. So I'll, I'll save these as my whatever name I want to give them. In this case, I might just leave that name. But later on, if I update and overwrite that name, that's going to, you know, I, I want to always have my motions relative to a fixed thing if I'm doing for these rotations. So I'm going to use this MLM vertices, or I could make it, uh, you know, maybe what would be easier is to say, uh, let's make this be the O set of vertices. So I'll say uh, vertices sub O, which now, those are my original vertices. Ooh. But, like that, yeah. Huh? Patch is not gonna like that, yeah. So yeah, you had to do it at the MLM, not the vertices. Well, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Here's what I'm gonna do. you you guys are exactly right. So here's the trick I'm gonna do. So I've I've created this other set of vertices, which is the O, but before ever I patch, I need to make sure that my MLM dot vertices equal MLM dot vertices sub O. And that way I have this original set not to be preserved. Okay, so it looks like it works. So now I'm ready to try, Let's. so now let's try running this thing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, view the fall. We're gonna watch the fall. I'm, I'm a little nervous about doing the rotations. I'll leave that, I, gotta, I don't wanna take all your fun. Jason, I want you to have some fun this weekend. I hate to be a fun, a fun destroyer. No, 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 no. Not this kind of fun. You haven't had this kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, the color, colorful is just starting. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to, we ran the code. So now we're going to plot the displacement in time. So um, for I equal, so I'm just using I again, I guess, uh, one to the length of T. Now, what do I need to do? I do need to do my translation and rotation. I've already got this code, so I'm just going to copy it. Um, right here. Okay, and uh, to make my life easy, I'll make this a J. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rot. I'm going to update a rotation. Uh, so I need to define my rotation here based on my new guys. Again, I don't want to take your fun, so I'm going to make it just an identity. Okay, but your rotation would would be from where? It'd be from, you know, the the rotation defined by the one, two, three rotation that we've already defined. So you'd you'd have a fully populated rotation, and then we need a translation, and so let's just call it uh, trans. And our trans is going to be the current. So this is interesting. Um, so we're starting right now at zero. Um, well, I, I think our x, y, z values are relative to zero. So if I want to leave zero, so let's just try that. So let's just try letting our translation be the x, y, z values. So it's going to be x sub row one the j column x sub 2 j column does everyone see what i'm doing here now there may be better ways to do this and this may not even be quite correct but logically i'm thinking well i want my rotation translation from this solution that i just derived so now i'm pulling it out i'm pulling the first second third state vector j component of that I do the operation, I get my new vertices. So now, now I've got to mix, so now I'm mixing things up. Now I'm always gonna work from the original vertices. You wanna see that? And I'll get the current vertices and then I'm ready to patch. So I'm gonna scroll back up here, grab the patch. And uh, I'll grab the clear axes in the patch. If I don't clear the axes, I'll see my previous. I think the way the patch works, at least it doesn't over, it, it doesn't clear what's already there. I'll patch MLM. Now I need to do a little pause so it's on the screen some period of time. Let's make ours be tenth of a second. And I'll end. Now I'll end that for a little bit. Ah. 
Is a good. Okay, so I got the rotation. Need the translation. And it looks like you have to transpose that. Well, yeah, I, I kept them both as a row. Oh. Oops. I will be honest. I it, it seems like I'm right less than half half the time on that. So. Um, <laughs> you would think on something like this where it can either be a row or a column, I'd at least be right half the time. <laughs> and I think about it. Well, it's, it's, the, it's that USB roll. Yeah. You know, you try to put a USB in, it's wrong. Oh, yeah. You flip it around, it's wrong. It's wrong. You flip it around, it's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So here we have. <laughs> okay, so it looks like our first USB plot. Obviously, it was an election. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But they got a right USB C. Okay, so there's no vertices sub O on the patch class. Oh, we need to not name it. We just make some temporary. I added to the patch class. That was, I think, where I went wrong. So uh, I'll just make a different vector vertices sub O for original. Try that. Okay. Well, that started to work. You see that working? Um, I think it might have been all the way through. No, I was all the way through. Oh, oh, one, two, three. Wait, am I getting the right? Oh, wait, wait, X is row. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I've got them. these. Yeah, yeah they're the other way around. See, I told you. <laughs> I got it right once and wrong three times, so I'm at 25%. That's true. It's a two. Jason called me on that one. Yeah, more signatures does not make things more safe. I think there's a point at which. All right, it's falling. <laughs> and it's moving to uh, the Y direction. So that's good. See that? It's moving, falling. Now, that doesn't look like an animation, does it? So let's make it look like an animation. Uh, we got to fix the axes. Yeah. So the way we do that is we got to call out this axis command, axis, and uh, it gives me all limits. That's what I'm after, the limits. And my limits is going to be a vector. Well, it's just called limits. I want to be creative. Um, and I need to find limits as some vector that's going to give me some limits. So I'll do that up here where I have my constants. So this is my uh, plotting. So limits, and I need to now, limits needs to be a, a vector that's going to have x min, x max, y min, y max. So, I don't know, negative 100. This is going to make this is going to make this really small, positive 100. It's going to be a little dot moving in. There. It's going to be a little dot moving in there. Your screen will be better. Now, why not see x is not moving in the x? Why not make x small? Well, if I make what would happen if I made look? Do you see how I'm making all these the same size? It'll yeah, it'll skew the exactly. Exactly. I'll have a. You need to end up with a five. Yeah, it's going to fall off the screen. I'm, I'm kind of trading off, uh, falling off the screen, but yet still being able to see something. Okay, so rocket is falling and going to the side and fell off the screen. Uh, now, the time, let's see, I don't know our time is equal to no one. This is not in any conceivable way real time, but Presumably, if these times operations are the same, it's doing a plot at a fixed time step and they're uniform apart. If the integration time are uniform apart, too, I would get some feeling of that. It looks to me like this thing is falling at an ever faster rate. So, this tool and what we're doing, is it ever possible to get it to 
sell it to make it real time? Well, yeah, I mean in that well. No, okay. No, you make that real time on real. a Windows machine or on any computer, really. I mean, it wasn't like that. Okay, so, okay, but there's sort of two answers. The very technical answer, no, you're not gonna get real time on a Windows machine. But a, a better answer is, yeah, you could. You could let your time step be going to your pause, right? Let your pause just be your time step. Then the only thing you have is the added lag of doing those operations. You can maybe do the time step minus those. You can get it to look and feel like Somewhat. It. Yeah, I mean, as good as any code. You know, if you run somebody else's dynamics code and they, they, you can choose a time scale, it'll be as good as that. Um, and probably for what we're doing, that will be, you know, if you're just trying to get that intuitive feel, that will be fine. Your actual time was correct from the plots. So, from the, the MLM project, you know, because it's only dropping 20 meters, it's almost pretty quick when you try to do that. Slow yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, did, so I didn't put in the rotate. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting to take rotation. So, I'm not doing rotation, but you see the parts. Everyone see the parts have to come together now. Let me ask you the last thing. What about, we talked a little bit about control. What would I do? <clears throat> let's just try that together, right? I know I'm taking a little of your fun, but let's look at that for just a minute. Let's say I wanted to have some control inside here. Okay. Uh, We've got this FR that I pass in, so I'm gonna overwrite it. <clears throat> and I could do different things, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I talked about a, P, a PD controller earlier. Just a kind of vague idea of that. Um, in this case, I'm gonna do a different kind of control. I'm gonna do what I call a bang-bang controller. In this case, by control, I mean, I'm just varying the inputs based on something. So I'm gonna overwrite FR, and I'm gonna do a, <clears throat> I'll do this, if um, I don't know what we're going to base it on. If I'm going to look at the Y term or the <clears throat> I'm going to take one of these guys. So if X sub, uh, let's look at the Z. I don't even know why I'm picking it out, but it's, um, well, it's the current X, Z. So one, two, three. So if X three, so if it's dropped, is um, it's going in the negative. If it's less than negative five units, then I want FR to equal negative 100. Let's say, um, we'll try to make it so it's visible. Okay, so if it's less than 25, I'm gonna go negative 100. Is that, that's a bigger value than what I had, right? I wanna be able to see what's going on. Let's make it a thousand. Okay. So look, I'm now making FR be a function of, of X3. It's not linear, it's a stepwise function, right? It's one value and then bam, it's another value, so it's not linear, but okay. And what I'm expecting to see is I think I had FR as like plus 10 and now it's gonna go minus 1,000. So I should be seeing some motion and I see it should see something in theory different. You know, the non, I don't know if that saves when I run this. No, it doesn't look like it did. No. Notice this guy didn't save here. I did this on purpose. Okay. See the little asterisk here? So this is another thing. Just Yeah, I have a little weekend on that. Yeah. So when you <laughs> when you correct the function. <clears throat> okay. So when you change a function, you can't run the function, obviously, but you do have to save it. And I do have the little asterisk up there to tell me if I'm running the current thing. So now we save it. Starting to fall. Oops, I'm not sure what it did there. It did something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what happened. Gravitational pull was, ran out of fuel. I mean, it looks like, yeah, it's FR. Oh, that's right. It's going on the side, right? Yeah, it's And then you're not adding the rotation, so all it's doing is moving. So it's just moving in the X direction. Yeah. That's one of those your side thrusters. Maybe, yeah, yeah. At this point, I think I'm interested in showing that I can change it. Um, and we, we did see that. Didn't do quite what I was thinking, but maybe I didn't think through it hard enough. Okay. Flying brick. Transfer to MLM. Questions, comments? So what I need to do is before I leave, I need to push this to the Dropbox. So you'll have this code. It's saved. 
to the Dropbox. All right. Okay, so that controls the, the bang bang control. Yeah, that's right. why we call that. That is just looking at the position and applying the pressure. So we also talked about doing like. I talked about a PID controller. PID, but you said PD or PD. PD. Oh, yeah, PD. No, no, Proportional so. integral. Yeah, I, oh, I did mention about a way to look at on. Um, so That's PD. probably advanced. I don't want to fill your head with too much. Well, the P, just the PD one. PD. Yeah. What would a PD look like? A PD might look like. Um, okay. So, well, yeah, so I'll have some gain, some, uh, you know, K, I'll call some KP times. Now, so it's the error. And the error is your reference minus your current. Desired minus whatever you say. So I could say something like um, my, I guess we're looking at the Z, Z, the landing height seems to matter, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here's an example. So I'd have like Z desired minus Z current. Okay, so that's a that's a that's a P controller right there. It's as simple as that. PID is linear control. It's used widely in the US. Other countries tend not to use PID control as much. You have to look at the controller works, linear controller. So here I'm taking a, a constant times an error term. If I wanted to have a D controller, I could have some a second term, so some KD times, and I think of the KD as the damping, the derivative, it's a velocity dependent term, times a Z, maybe some velocity, Z velocity desired or z dot right minus x sub one two three four five six seven eight this is PID now. nine this well this is p this is the p yeah this is a sample pd control term where i gotta define kp <laughs> kd it's, those are constants and, and so part of the control, I mean, there's a lot of theory behind it. I mean, it's linear, there's a lot of theory, right? You can't arbitrarily choose, sure. You can't arbitrarily choose, well, <laughs> yeah, you arbitrarily choose them, but, you know, you, you if you recall way back to controls class. Exactly, stability, you don't know. Maybe you can do a root per type criteria, you can do fold, you can check fold, you can do various things to check, or you can just try and hide it to make it work, which is what everyone does. So you have to do that for each x, y, z axis. Well, maybe. I mean, you're trying to land. I did. I wasn't too picky. Yeah, somewhat. It depends on the perturbations. I mean, if I were starting and we're going to use a P control, I'd see if I could just look at my D component, right? Because that's your main thrust. Hey, yeah, but you can build on all of them. And eventually, you apply it to like the angles as well. Yeah. And, you know. And this is listen. You guys can go blunt. You know, this may work out easily, or you may. I mean, the stuff that you could spend a lot of time, right? Uh, you decide how much time you want to spend. You kind of see how I grade. Obviously, obviously, I'm not. You know, I'm not expecting you to spend three weeks on this next this next week. But so so look here. Here is what I'm saying. You could sit down with this because I, I honestly don't know. I make this stuff up and just throw it out there and see what sticks. You know, you may sit down and get the thing written, get it checked out. I don't know how long it'll take. A couple hours, and so now I'm ready to get. I, Check it. Now I'm ready to work on my controller. An hour later, hour and a half later, it works. You're feeling good, you know. Or conversely, you could be three hours in and no closer than your work. Okay, you know, if I got three hours in, I'd probably start saying, "I think I paid my dues on this. I'm going to discuss what works in post." Now hey, you may be three hours and say, "No, this, this is. I really want to solve this. You keep that that fine, right?" But um, you know, it's a learning exercise here. So, and you guys can monitor yourselves at this point. All right. Any other questions on flying brick? You mentioned about the keystrokes. Yeah. The ODE instead of having those outside. Well, I you I don't know how I I have these uh there's like a get key function. Yeah. You can use if you mess with it. I don't know how to put it inside there. I don't you know. I don't quite know how to put it inside. So I did a really terrible thing and made a global variable. It's actually my first oh, time. Oh, did that work? It does. Oh, there you but, go. But I've, I've never used it in that lab. And I'm just global? Yeah. <laughs> well, globals are fine. Yeah. Globals are fine. That works. So you put it in the ODE function? 
consider it in the regular career. So I actually have a while that does this with small steps ODE, but I think now that I know that you are allowed to, because of the literally, you can put it in there just. Well, the only question is though, how does it know to check? Because does it look at the keyboard while it's working? The, there's, and then the other here thing has uh, functions that uh, are called. But the, but the other question is, the, you know, so you've got to be plotting it while you're doing it. Well, listen, if you guys come up with some nice stuff and want to share, that'd be great. I mean, feel free to share. The problem I've run into with making it real time dropping is that humanly trying to get the key. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm like, that. I'm okay with video games, but. <laughs> well, so Tommy's doing some pretty cool stuff. Like, so, you, know, so, so, you can't play yeah. him. Yeah, so yeah. I have so not been able to make that point. Anymore. So if you were going to do that, now I don't know either. If you were going to do that, what I would do, and Tommy sounds like you're doing something differently, but I would actually do, I would probably slow it down. I'd do it, I'd integrate for a small period of time, a tenth of a second, and then display everything, and then and then maybe even slow it down to half time or something. Display everything, look for a key, a key button input. If you did that, then you could just change the FR and call it into the next one, and you have that, you know, loop. That's Fairly close to what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. But the only thing is there. It takes some trial and error to make it controllable. And yeah. Like so the problem there, though, is you're, it's going to be waiting for a button. So yeah. you need to use that callback. So it just does its thing unless you hit the button and then it updates. Yeah. It might have some wait for a button. It just, just keeps going. It uses the value. It uses yeah. whatever value yeah. there. Yeah. It's a global value. Yeah. So it looks like. If you're interested in doing the keyboard stuff, Tommy has something, so I'd communicate. Maybe he could share some things, um, and uh, you know, sharing all this stuff is fine. You know, share. Feel free to share in terms of learning. Okay. Other com uh, comments on Brick. So we can do either a user input or a key ID. Yeah. You know, if I'm sitting here saying, "Look, you know, this seems like a fun problem, but let's get real," I would sit down. Get the thing, you know, get the thing working. I put some kind of controller in. Frankly, the easiest thing would be a bang bang controller, you know, turn it on and then maybe maybe try to get it to say turn on a little left, maybe have a couple of graduations, you know, let it fall a little bit, then start trying to slow it. Mm -hmm. Play with that, play with it a little bit of that. I'd probably do that. Maybe try a PD function. If you're just having fun and want to do something it's graphical, fun, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a time drain. It's a time drain. I put out there. Or it takes off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, yeah, you have to be careful on how much force you apply. All that, yeah. But sometimes you just <laughs> it's just unrecoverable. <laughs> yeah, you know, probably if we would have, we made something that was just hard to control from. That is hard to control from dynamics. That's why engineers, you know, NASA and now you guys. I mean, those are hard problems, right? Like the stuff you deal with. If you made your little spacecraft so that it had big thrusters right at the center in all directions, then you know you'd be flying around like a, a video game. See. So all right, flying brick, going once, going twice, any other discussion? Bring them up if you have it. All right, so we are obviously not going to get through everything today. Here's what I've got. We kind of talked about detail, graph stuff. I got these three things, so we got to pick. Let's pick the next one that we want to do and, and then carry on. So I've got, we could do more MATLAB on a rolling ball. Um, maybe I'll suggest we've now seen two problems in MATLAB. It would just be a third one. We've kind of seen two. We could talk about integration. Kind of see what's behind the hood on integration if you want. It's not going to be on the test, you know, they show you what's on the hood. And then I have a linearization problem that you want to do. What's your pleasure? What do we want to, what's your pleasure to jump in next? Well, okay, so I was going to show you Runga Kutta. Show, okay, so right, well, this, what we're doing is a run, that probably would be a nice thing to do. Right now, this OD45 is a Runga Kutta, it's an adaptive time step runga kind of method. What I would do is I would review basically how numerical integration works very quickly, a 20 minute review of numerical integration and runga cut up. Um, you could write your own. Um, yeah, that, that. Okay, no, it's not on the exam. This is, you know, at this point, it's, it's just extra information, but it is very useful information since doing this. Okay. You want to do another report? Yeah, so we'll, we'll just record that one.
Thanks. Thank you. I will forget. Oh, I am recording. Did I stop it? I